Do you like them? Permed. Your lashes or your brows? My brows. Perm means curl. Yeah. yeah, if you get your hair permed, it's curled. You didn't get them di um, dyed. Lifted. Lifted. Well, it's not perm. I really think they should lift the bit in the middle. Why would they take that out? That's fine. That's fine? Yeah, I think so. Sloppy handoff. Sloppy handoff if you ever on record? Mm hmm oh. What's up, people of YouTube? Happy holidays from us here at the studio. Welcome back to the Peter Beck and Ra Ra show. For those of you who don't know, we have a Facebook group. I'll leave a link for it down below. Uh, you can join and post photos, post questions. The one thing that Peter won't do is critique work because that's not something that he does, but um, by all means, feel free to join it. And speaking of, which is why I'm bringing the whole thing up, is because we received a question in our group from someone by the name of Siddharth. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. He asked us uh, if we, if he would shoot, bleh. Let me try that again. If you should be shooting in manual or aperture or shutter priority in the studio. So Peter decided that he's going to give you guys a tutorial on why he would only shoot in manual. I think. Did I get that right? Why are you wearing that stupid hat? Because it's hat Christmas. It doesn't match your swamp you green hair. You were supposed to wear the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Peter was supposed to wear the hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Christmas. I'm being festive. And she looks oh. beautiful. And <laughs> your hair's the tree. Yeah. The tree. <laughs> With my Christmas nails. With Christmas blood nails. Them. They're not red. Yeah, they are. They're blood. Purple. I wish you picked me up from the station like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should get into it. What, sorry? Should we? <laughs> yeah, it's that thing about the eight second mark thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Are you anyway. going to take control of it? <laughs> yes. Cool, so... It's bad lighting on you, Peter. Oh, dear. <laughs> so that's my trick. Let's leave my jokes alone. What I've got, the hard part is, is trying to teach you exposure like your five-year-olds. It's really easy for me to do it really technical and really advanced, but if you're someone like me, I don't get that stuff. So I'm going to try and dumb this down as much as I can. And we've ha got a problem where things have changed over the years with photography. Uh, when I started, it was light meters. So, yes, I have light meters. I hardly ever use them anymore, but I do have my old light meters. Um, we did light meters and then we did Polaroids on fashion shoots and on the stuff I did with the fishing magazines. We just pretty much used a light meter. But this is back in the days where we didn't have meters in camera. And today is going to be a real pain in the butt day for doing this because our exposure is going to go all over the place because it's going sunny shade, sunny shade. Yes. We're going to try and do a lot of the teaching part when the shades are because it looks like there's more cloud in the sky than blue. So the very first thing I want to try and get through to you and the reason why I would never, ever, ever shoot anything in aperture priority, shutter priority or P for professional is you've just given all the controls of your camera, uh, all the controls of your exposure to your camera and you have no say in it whatsoever. So it's actually not actually exposing for the actual light, it's exposing for what the camera can see. And what I mean by that, in our cameras we have a uh, meter in there that meters out through the lens and you can either have it as a single little dot, so it'll only meter just a little dot on the wall, then we might have it as center weighted, which means it'll meter the center, but then meter outside of the center, and then do some type of averaging or make the center slightly brighter than the outside area. Then we have things like a valuative, which is more, it'll look at the whole frame and take a guess at what it thinks in the whole frame is going to make your exposure. Now, one of the problems with that is as soon as we change our background, we're going to change our exposure. And the v quickest little way I can do it is I've got a, a video camera sitting on top of 
uh, like Hasselblad, and this is set to evaluative metering. So there's the little dot with brackets around it, and I've got it set on to, at the moment we're set on to shutter priority, and we've gone to a hundredth of a second. And as I turn this camera around, you'll see my exposure just changed. So see, as I change, turn my camera, so when I'm here, I'm at 100th of a second at f5. When I come to here, I'm at 100th of a second at 1.8. When I come around to here, I'm at 100th of a second at 2.5. So I have three completely different exposures and the light didn't change. So instantly that's going to give me problems. And I'll show you some of the problems when I get uh, rah rah into shot. If we go back to the old school way, which was light meter, I would come in here with a light meter. I'd just take my reading without getting in front of it. I'd just dial in my setting. And right now, that is giving me, I've got this 800 ISO, 160th of a second. It's giving me round about F10. So if I dial that into my camera now, So F10, 800 ISO, 160th, take a shot, there is my shot. So you'll see dialing that in there is giving me my exposure, you'll see my histogram, uh, color balance is a little bit off, I'm just going to quickly fix color balance, bang, you'll see the, how all the color balance line back up now. I'm just going to do this one more time, like I said, it's going to be a pain today because we went back to the proper shade. Yeah, and that brought it back to, to do it 160. Oh, I'm a 640, you idiot. Um, 160, that's actually brought me down to F9. So that we just lost a third of a stop then. We'll just take that to F9, take a shot. Right, so that's giving me at F9. Now if I get Rara in there now, oh God, and just take back. a picture of her, cool. You'll see there's our picture. I have my overexposure warning turned on. You'll see nothing's overexposed. It's a nice picture, everything's sitting in between my settings fine. That was on my 100mm f2.2. Now if I grab my 150mm f3.5 lens with the same camera settings and take a shot. We will see that picture has just got brighter. So if I come back one shot and measure, say, the wall close to a head, I'm at down here. If you look down this bottom area here, I am at 202, 202, 202. If I go to the next frame and go there, I'm 221, 221, 221. So it's pretty much come up a third of a stop. And the reason that is, is because in photography, all our lenses have got a thing called an f-stop. And our lenses like this is f2.2 is fully wide open on this lens. That's fully wide open at 3.2. So an f-stop is relative of the size of the hole to the lens. So where it can get confusing is this is an f1.4 lens. We can see how big the actual hole in the front of that is. And then this is a 1.5 lens, fully wide open. You'll see that there's a big difference in the size of that hole, but it's relative to the size of the lens, which it works at. In cinematography, we don't use f-stops, we use t-stops. And a t-stop is the amount of light that actually hits the film or the sensor which is much more accurate. So we get what we call slow lenses and fast lenses. And what I mean by that, this lens here, if I T-stop this, it's F 2.2, but it's actually T 2.8. If I 
stopped this lens, this is f3.2, but it's t2.8. So you'll see that we get lenses that are brighter and lenses that are darker. And now some of the problems we have with using one of these things, because this doesn't know if we're shooting with a uh, what I call a fast lens or a slow lens in a way if it's a bright or a dark lens. In the film days, we used to have that we had plenty of room to move. In digital, we do not have that same room. So as much as that got me into a ballpark, it's not going to show me that really, if I want to be within a third of a stop, I'm not going to get there with this. It will get me started in the, the first place. The next thing we have is in our cameras, we have our meters. And like you saw before, by me moving around on this video up here, you'll see the meter is pre-changing the setting and anything, aperture priority, shutter priority, any of those. One of the easiest ways I can show this is if I put this camera now into a priority. So if we come into aperture priority and I'll leave my aperture the same and I'm just going to take three frames in aperture priority, but one frame is going to be of this black wall, then one frame is going to be of this white wall, and then one frame is going to be this grey wall. What you'll see is by using the camera in an auto mode, if you have a look at these, this in our histogram, see how it's all sitting in the centre? It's all sitting in the, well, it's round about the centre there, and it's round about the centre there. So what it's done is turned black to grey, white to grey, grey to grey. So it's made our exposures turn all three walls to grey, which means if I'm moving the model and the background, so if, if Rara can go there, so if I shoot Rara here, cool, I'll get this exposure. If I jump onto this wall, the white wall, I'll get this exposure. Sorry, focus. Cool. And then if I put on this grey wall, cool. So all of these, I've pointed the camera directly at her face. Um, but you'll see, look, we have three different exposures. And I don't want that big a difference in my work. I want to be able to have the same exposure all day long. Now, one other way we can do things is we can grab 18% grey, because we already just found out a minute ago, this camera is trying to make our exposure exactly halfway between black and white. Okay, so now what I'm going to do at the moment, before I had my camera set onto uh, aperture priority and I on my metering I had it center weighted. I'm going to change this to spot which means it's just going to take the center of the camera and I'm going to come in here and meter on the center of that card and all I'm doing is I'm looking through my viewfinder and I'm changing my shutter and my well pretty much either working my head into a priority or so if I could I could actually say right in my head I'm going to go shutter priority and I'm going to have 200th of a second I only change my ISO or my aperture or I put my head in the aperture priority I say I want to be f8 I only change my ISO or my shutter so at the moment I'm going to leave it in my head at f8 and I'm just metering, so I've got a dead center point F8 that looks about right. Now if I come in on Rara, she can drop the card down. Cool. I take a picture. This is getting to me a much more accurate exposure. So it's taking into account whatever lens I've got on. It's taking into account of what I'm shooting at because I actually shot at a gray card. Now one of the problems with it, if you don't carry around a grey card, I have a technique of metering off the model's face, but you'll notice the model's face is lighter than a grey card. And it's about two thirds of a stock lighter. So if I'm going to be metering on the model's face, I'm going to tend to be metering two thirds of a stop above centre. It's actually easier just to carry one of these around. But then the easiest thing of all is by using your overexposure warning. 
So you can use that to get you close to the area or you can just guess it or you can go in a shutter priority or an aperture priority, get an exposure that you like and then put those settings into a manual. But what I can do now is I can actually light her through my overexposure warning. So if I come in now and we have lost a little bit, I reckon we've just lost about maybe a third of a stop. So if I take my first pitch, I'm not going to change anything and I can just look on the back of my camera, see how there's no warnings going off? We knew we had a warning going off on the wall before. So I'm just thinking what's more important to me? So I'm gonna come down to 7.1, we just, the sun's going down as yeah. we talk, 6.3, I'm gonna take a shot now. I'm gonna see, see none of my overexposure warning has gone off. So I'm gonna come down 160th, 6.3. It's still getting darker, but see the wall has just started to get it go off now. So this is telling me, as long as I've got nothing flat blinking on Rara, I'm happy. So I'm trying to get this as bright as I can without her going over. And if we see our screen on here, you'll see that there's nothing on Rara that's going over. If I turn that off, we've got a beautifully exposed picture of her in the center. Then it doesn't matter what lens I use because if I'm going to meter through the lens, it's going to be metering based on what that lens is metering at. So I shoot this picture on this wall. Then I'll get Rara to step onto this wall. Cool, and shoot a picture. And then I'll get Rara to get onto this wall and shoot a picture. And you'll see that my exposures on Rara are exactly the same. The light's slightly different because it's a different angle. If Rara now quickly changes, at the moment she's wearing a black um, dress, we're going to change her into a white dress, which if we were using any of the aperture priority, shutter priority, or P for professional, we would start to get a different exposure because she's now wearing white, not black. What does P actually stand for? P, program. I think. Yeah, program mode. So basically, um, with the P, it allows you. Let's see if I can get. Good question. So we've got, come on to P. It now allows me to change my shutter and does an evaluative on, or I can change my aperture. So it's neither priority. I can pick and choose whichever one I feel like. Oh. Is that cool? You happy with that? Yeah. So if we come back to manual, and we don't want to be on 18, now you've actually messed up. What, what was I shooting on? Um, 6.3 to 160. You said it was a good question. I was just trying to make you feel good. <laughs> that was your Christmas present, all right? <laughs> Better than a lump of coal. Coal's too expensive, and oh, yeah, no, sorry. Greenies would kill me if I started giving away coal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Rara would kill me, coal miner. So now if I come in here, hopefully the sun didn't change much, but you'll see that if I click from that picture to her white picture in the black, you'll see how face is identical, right? And we're just on the edge, it's just on the edge of going off. Again, if I did my exposure based on this, normally my whites will go off. Now we've got the sun creeping up on us again. Woo. Woo. So the one other thing I could do, 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 do. Death staring the sun in hopes it'll go away. <laughs> well, this is a whole thing. So if I'm working, right, so now let's come into real world. I'm working in manual. We've got a day like today. So if I'm shooting on the back of my camera, I'm going to have to be aware of the sun. And this is the reason why we would have overexposure warning. Or what I can do is I can come onto this beautiful thing called mirrorless. Now there's a lot of, there's not, I don't think there's many haters about mirrorless anymore, but there used to be a lot. When I first went with mirrorless, there's all these haters about mirrorless. One of the things I love about mirrorless is what I see in the viewfinder is what's happening in the picture. And on a day like today where we're going bright and dark all the time, I can get my exposure perfect every shot without having to worry about any of this other crap. And my jo job 
as a photographer, I really only want to care about my subject. I don't want to be caring about technical crap. That's taking my mind off being creative. So with this here, uh, at the moment we're in, cool, we're in full manual here. I have a thing called zebra ink, and I've it glares well, real bad. Glares really bad. Is that yeah. better? Oh, not really. Well, give me an <laughs> angle that's better. <laughs> Yeah, there we go, I can see it now. Right, so you can see, I can't see if I'm focused or not, but you can see how that overexposure, also the zebra is going off. And I can now adjust my exposure and set just so it's not going off on her. Now how zebra works, zebra was originally designed for videoing and it was more designed for things like working on TV. So a film crew would go out each day, they'd have their reporter, they might be doing a first story here, the second story outside, the third story in a dark factory over across the road. And those three stories might have to run next to each other. So the one thing they need to have consistent in their frame is the presenter. So how they would work it with video is they would set their zebra, I'll do it now, in their video camera, Oops. They would normally set zebra level round about sort of the 75 through to 85, depending on the presenter. I'm going to just say 80 for ra ra. So with that, am I getting glare there? Can you read that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, oh. so now what I'd do, I would change my exposure till I got as much of that zebra onto ra ra which is about there. Which means if I go into a dark place now and get that amount of zebra onto her, she's gonna be exposed exactly the same. But that's no good for us because we wanna see expressions. In a video, it doesn't matter because it's continual videoing. It doesn't matter if they've got all this zebraing stuff over them. So I tend to set my zebra exposure to 100 plus and what that then works at as, as a highlight warning. So now if I come in on Rara here, and I can put, at the moment I'm at F1.4, 100 ISO, I can, let's get back in there, let's just focus, no, no, you're fine. Can you see that all right? Cool. Yes. Right, so now I can just keep bringing up, see it's a bit too far, I don't want the top to go over. There, I'm, I'm happy that tiny little bit going over, I could live with that. There I've got my exposure, so I can take my pictures, and it's hopefully, oh cool, it's actually working on capture. Um, I'm going to do it properly, so I'm going to do it with focusing. Cool. cool. Yeah, so all that information I'm seeing through the viewfinder. Now what I can do is hopefully the sun's going to change. No, let's do it this way. Come right out closer to, so come out closer to the light. Yeah, let's get you right over there. So I'm now putting into a position that's, Right, so I've got direct sunlight onto her. So if Ra uh, oh. Beck can see this. Let's Beck hop over this way. And Beck Do you want this rings. on a tripod? Is that going to be better if it's on a tripod? No, it's Don't okay. stand it's on the cable. My zebra ring's going off. No, just worry about the back of the screen. Okay. So you'll see that, see how we've got zebra ring going off her? That better. We've got zebra ring going off on Ra Ra there. Yep just through my viewfinder, see how quick and easy I can get my exposure. So I'll live with that little bit of highlight into her hair. Now she takes two steps this way out of the sun. It's just there, right there. I'll get my focus onto her again. Now I can change, oh, get off that. Sorry, need to take a picture to get that turned off. Um, now I can change my shutter to get my exposure there. You saw how quick I can get my exposure just by using those highlight alerts. So with the sun going up and down all day, I'm instantly warned if she's going to be overexposed. The sun just came out and hit her. I can come in here a bit. So I'm going to actually start taking some pictures just using the zebra through my core. And I'm just taking it right to the edge to going off. Jump over here a second. So let's get in a darker area. Okay, let's dump right down in this dark hole down here. even further in, right down in that, there, that's nice and dark. So even in here, it's not the greatest light in the world, but you'll see how quick 
I can get my exposure that's perfect, perfect. Right, it's not great light, but you'll see that I've got my exposure perfect on there. There's nothing that's going off. If I turn my alerts on on this, you'll see no highlight has gone off on that at all. The picture before, come on. Oh, gee, there's dotted around everywhere. There's a picture before, there's a picture before. See, all of these pictures, see how there's no highlight alerts have gone off on any of those, and that's just using the zebrine within the camera. I'm hoping that's clear to you. It is a, a difficult subject. There's three things to understand. Number one is the camera's meter system is trying to make whatever you point it at gray. No, you're not putting a Christmas hat on me. <laughs> See, these are really nasty people. Everyone comments about how nasty I am to models and to... <laughs> Thank you. And they pick me. on me all the time. It's, I'm just their running joke. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, you've lost my train of thought. Thanks. So the, the things that most people don't understand is number one, whatever you point your camera at in any auto mode, it's trying to make it gray. So if it's something that's white, it's going to go gray. If it's something that's black, it's going to go gray. Number two, light meters were all good in the days of film and they're still good to get you in the ballpark. But if you want to get super accurate, it depends on your lens. It, unless you're using cine lenses that have T-stops then you can put these into T-stops and get much more accurate with these. I find the most, the, to me, the two things, the easiest way is have a grey card and just manually expose so grey card is dead centre in the middle or use your overexposure warnings, your highlight alert or your zebring. So in the mirrorless cameras, you can use the zebring system. On your DSLRs, you use your overexposure or highlight alert um, and you just push it till it just goes over where you, on the skin where you don't want it and then back it off a fraction so it's not going over. I hope that makes it easier. Um, my, still, my main aim is when I'm out on the field taking shots is to worry about more about getting my shot, getting expression on the model, get the feel in the shoot and that's why I love especially using the natural light out and about as things like the mirrorless because I can set up my zebring so I see it in the viewfinder so if the light does change I see it instantly in my viewfinder. Um, how are you going to wrap it up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a Christmas present? Oh, you're going to have to give them a Christmas present. But you said wrap it up. <sighs> so what are you going to give them for Christmas? Um. Um. I was trying to think of something witty, but it didn't. Ooh. What have you done to this? Nothing. Witty. It's right. Well, it's not. No, yeah, well, it's, it's not the good lighting. It's not the good lighting. It's not the lighting I would use on you. Hang on. I don't have glasses on, so I can't see. My gimbling works a bit. Oh, there we go. Come, come, do, do, do. For Christmas, we have given you this awesome video on exposure. <laughs> no, that's really bad. That's just... as best you can do. <laughs> I liked it. You liked it. <laughs> it was right. Okay. No, I, I think you really need to sing Happy Christmas. Uh, is Happy Christmas a song? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not singing. I'm not a singer, not a model, not an assistant. Not much really, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As I said, I will leave a link down below to uh, the Facebook group that I mentioned. So if you guys do have questions, you want to post some photos, by all means, please feel free to do so. I've got Melbourne Five Day Workshop in February. If anyone is interested, you can come and see all of this craziness in real life and learn lots. And it's a really intensive course. All the details for that are on the workshop website. There won't be a salesperson. What are you doing? What's with the foot in the air? <laughs> it's helping me think about what I'm going to say. So, depending on where I liked my joke you... about wrapping it up like a Christmas present, and now this is just waffling. No, um, it's just seeing what you do with your feet. It's nearly as bad as your hands. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We hope you enjoyed. We'll see you with the new year. Aren't you going to thank them for their support this year in thank building our channel? Thank you for your support this year. <laughs> and making sure you earn enough money to get yes. paid. Yes, that as well. And 
thanks for everything. I Peter just said it all for me, so now I just feel weird repeating it. I'm not a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to cut this now. Thanks, guys. Bye. I need to go buy wine. Who's <laughs> <Stop> following me? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Who would bring him over here? It's messy over here. Can't show them that we live like this. Stopped it. I heard the diddle loom. Oh. Why haven't you put that photo? Are you sure now? I love it. That's what photo? That one. Why? Actually, I thought we forgot I took I that love one. I it. That's alright. I'll edit it for you. When? When I feel like it. What are you doing? Just seeing what my skills are like holding this for how long. It's a weird thing to do. Alright. Let's create some art. <laughs> Oh, tricked ya. Mm -hmm. I, I love that photo. It is a very nice photo.